Where should we put you then? Hello! Well, high time I got back on with this project, I think. My goal over the next few days is to strip off all the remaining bodywork and get the thing down to just a rolling chassis. First step will be removing all this steering gear so that I can then remove this bulkhead. Um, then I'll drag it out a bit and bring in the digger and crane off the rear body. But yeah, <laughs> that's a couple of days away yet. Since filming the last episode, the only work I've done on, on this truck is take off the um, the brake box here, the well, foot pedal box rather, and I put it on my other Land Rover. This is the one off that Land Rover, and this had kind of seized up. And uh, yeah, so despite being regular use, it was jamming up in there and. Um, the brakes were binding because the master cylinder here wasn't able to release after each time you put your foot on the brake. I took the one off here that's been out of service for <laughs> like 10 years or so and uh, it worked perfectly, which is nice. Before removing any of the steering gear, I'm going to get the angle grinder out and cut off this battery box. The way it's going to end up with the, the new 200 TDI engine in there, well new, um, the battery is going to sit under the passenger seat instead of here so all this can go and that will give me better access to getting the steering components dismantled. I suspect as I start dismantling the bulkhead I'm going to need the grinder for just about every nut and bolt that's on there, they all look well seized. Yeah this bit first. joints here look in horrible state but I might as well try and pop off some of these next. Yeah, I've got a couple of ball joint extractors here, it goes on like that, and you do up this bit, pop them apart. That one there, goes on like that. And then of course the one, <laughs> the one that you can just hit with a big hammer. There's a get that nut off. So. So all of the steering joints, all the um, ball joints here are consumables really and I'm going to replace all of them. So if I can just bludgeon them apart and I will. tab there. Usually considered bad practice to use an adjustable spanner but this shouldn't be done up tight. 
so that will be fine. Mm -hmm. Cool. Right now this arm, I can't put the separator in. One because I need to keep it. This arm is not a consumable. Two. Don't think the, f the uh, fork here is quite wide enough to actually pop it free. There is a special puller for this. There's two little pokey out bits there, and it's a basically a two-legged puller. It grips on there, and the centre bit pushes on this bit and pulls it off. Yeah, I do have a two-legged puller, but I don't think it would grip very well on those. Try with this first. Yeah, this one might just work. I'm just putting the nut back on to protect the threaded bit. There's a lot of tension in there. There we go. So what I was doing there is winding up the tension, essentially trying to pull these two bits together and then releasing that tension by just tapping it. So this is a ball joint puller that I've properly butchered before and I can't even remember why or when. Yeah, it's probably a very long time ago. Um, but there's enough of the interior chopped out there that it sat over there and uh, more or less did the job. So that's good. So I've got that arm off without Damaging those splines or that threaded section. Put the nut back on there. So I'm less likely to lose it. Feels like quite a nice steering box this one. Well, in <laughs> in Land Rover, in, in relative Land Rover terms. Feel like too much play. Anyway, uh, I'll take that off now. Right, so we've got another locking washer. The Series 3 dashboard just looks, uh, it just looks horrible to my eyes. Um, yes, 
it also just restricts access to pulling things apart. Well, <laughs> like a modern dashboard. Yeah, I may end up leaving that, leaving the steering column in place for a minute. This side of it is straightforward to work on. This side of it in here, just a mess. here are fused on to the, this is steel pipe and expect that to loosen up. So that's great. So now the clutch system is disconnected from the bulkhead to the rest of it. Right, so got these brackets here, one on each side, are holding up the bulkhead and then the bulkhead is attaching to outriggers down here. bolt there at the bottom on the outrigger looks properly seized. And I think it's the same down here. Right, I'm going to start with that one. This is a bolt going from the foot of the bulkhead and then it goes right through the chassis outrigger just under here. Oh. <laughs> Bloody hell, I didn't expect that. Leave the bolt in for the map and work on the other side. So I've undone the nut, that's fine, it's just the head of the bolt and the bolt itself seems to be seized in the chassis. None of which is Good. Ah, there we go. You should be able to make out there's a bracket here and a bracket here, and they're held onto the bulkhead by some rather fiddly bolts, but they're held onto the chassis by one, two, three bolts going through, and the same on this side. Um, I reckon what I'll do. make life a bit easier is undo these, try and take these bolts out and then take the brackets off, leave them on the bulkhead for the minute. So again I undid the nuts right to the end of the thread and then I could basically hit the nuts with the hammer and just tap these bolts through. There are the bolts. As in, they weren't even greased. Thankfully not seized in the chassis. That's, that's pretty good.
that's it. Apart from that, the bolt there and the bolt there need drifting out and then the bulkhead will come off. Now I can lift a bulkhead but <laughs> I'm not sure I want to lift it up and walk along what's left of the chassis and get down here with it. That looks awkward. Next up on the Land Rover is the boring process of undoing or probably just grinding off all the bolts that hold the uh, rear tub onto the chassis. I've got to bring the Land Rover out anyway to lift off the rear tub so I might as well do that now give myself a bit more working room and well I've got the other Land Rover there so I might as well drag it out with that. See if I can find someone to drive the Land Rover. Oh no! Lucky vision. Well, I didn't know that, did I? Until we got tied up, didn't it? I never got tied up, that's how thing. Next I'm going to take off the seat box. I've got to dismantle the seat box from the rear body anyway. Um, I've also got to take off the seat rails, things like that. Um, the seat belt mounts, the seat belts, yeah, they, they've definitely got to change. Yeah, you can see these are, well, they're gone. I'm going to fire up the generator, get the compressors going and actually get the air tools out and uh, make some noise and I'll try and take off what I can when actually undoing it but I suspect it's going to be angle grinder time
So with these seat box removed, so I've got much better access to the fixings on the rear tub there. Um, but uh, the fixings aren't actually fixed on. Let me show you. So we look here on this side, bolted onto the rear tub, but where that should attach to the outrigger, there's a gap. <laughs> so I'm assuming this is a nice new outrigger, um, just not really attached to anything. It is. It is literally not attached to anything. So on this side we've got a much crustier, horrible looking outrigger. And um, this one's got the brackets on it, but they're not bolted on. So after all that, I've removing the seat box to give myself a bit better access. Um, looks like the front end's been done for me, so <laughs> bonus. <laughs> Let's have a look around the back then. Yeah. That's interesting, I hadn't noticed that before. So here on the rear cross member, where the cross members are supposed to attach to the rear tub, there's missing bolts. Missing bolts, missing bolts, missing bolts and some missing bolts. So at this point I'm just starting to wonder what is actually holding the rear tub onto the chassis. Right <laughs> that would appear to be there. That's good progress then. That seat box put up a bit of a fight, but it wasn't too bad in the grand scheme of things. Um, and yes, yeah, it doesn't look like the, uh, the rear tub was attached at all. So that saved me some effort, I guess. It occurred to me that the electrics were still attached. And then I had a bit of a surprise. Yeah, there you go. So there's all the electrics and they're already disconnected. All I've got left to do then is the filler cap. So there's the, there's the, the actual fuel tank down there. And there's the filler cap is up there. Um, that rubber hose in between, I've got to disconnect. So with all these missing bolts, and the fact that all that electric's been already cut off, I'm presuming that the tub was being ready to be taken off anyway. Um, the only thing that's attached then is that um, fuel cap filler neck, fuel tank filler, oh, you know what I'm on about. I'm not even going to bother trying to undo the Jubilee clips that hold that on, I'm just going to cut them off. And uh, then I think we'll be ready. I need
So I think with two people, um, you could lift out and move it around without too much trouble. But it is an, it's another really awkward, sort of awkward weight. Now it's off though, if I need to move it, I can just um, roll it on its side and skate it long and get it out of the way. If you've watched this far, you're probably quite interested in the project. And so I thought this would be a good time to go over my plans for the vehicle and my overall goal of what I'm aiming at. So basically what I'm trying to do is to restore this thing and retain the 40 year uh, tax and test exemptions. So that means it's got to stay relatively original. Because obviously if I modify it too much, it's not going to be a 40 year old vehicle anymore. So to that end, I'll be keeping uh, leaf springs, for instance. So I can change it from the current um, leaf packs to parabolic springs. That's a that's a allowable upgrade. Um, I'll be keeping a Series Three gearbox, although not this one. But we'll get to that. Um, it'll have a 200 TDI, which is a bit of a stretch, but is arguably a like-for-like -like replacement for the original diesel engine. One of the biggest points about this is I'm intending to keep the original chassis. Now I could do a, I could get a Richard's chassis, um, a nice new one that's made to this specification, and that would be considered a light for light replacement. But I think this sh actual chassis is salvageable, so I'm going to have a go at doing that. From what I've seen so far, it's, well for a Series 3, it's in really good nick. My aim then is to knock off as much as I can with the needle gun and shot blast it and cut out any rot and replace it. I'm going to flip it upside down so I can open up the underneath and have a good look in there and clean out all this because it's a, it's a box section chassis it's very prone to trapping moisture inside and rotting from the inside out. But I'm going to replace everything that I can find that's not up to scratch and then my intention is to get the whole thing hot dip galvanised. So it will go from here, it will go and sit in a bath of acid, it will be pickled for a bit and then dipped in molten zinc. And what well, that will do, will not only coat the outside with zinc, but it will flood the inside there. And that's the best protection you can get. And then it will be as good as a new chassis. Let's have a look in a bit more detail then, starting right up front here. Um, I'm going to fix up the dumb irons. I'm going to possibly fabricate a new bumper, I think I probably will. Um, the steering I'm going to keep manual, I'm not going to put power steering on it. I'm quite happy with manual steering so I'm going to keep the original system there. I do have to remove this steering relay which is going to be really tricky. That's going to have to come out just for the zinc process and then it will go back in again. So that's a very tight fit in the chassis. I may have to actually just cut it out and then weld it back up again. So the axle, well, along with everything else, is going to come off and be refurbished. I've got replacement swivel hubs here. Um, but one big change that I am going to make, one concession to modernisation, is I'm probably going to put disc brakes on it. The reason being that it's the only thing yeah, it's the only thing I can think of where the modern 
version is simpler than the old version. So this has got twin leading shoe um, brakes on it at the moment, which you know drum brakes, which are okay and they're they're reasonably efficient, but they're a pig to set up and they're a pig to maintain and I've just found the drum brakes just to be a faff. So there's two main designs of disc brake conversion. I'm not sure which I'm going to go with yet. Um, one of them keeps the existing swivel hub and it basically puts a disc where that back plate is. Um, the other one, the other conversion, replaces the swivel hub with a custom unit and then enables um, defender disc and calipers to be um, bolted on which would be nice because you obviously it's much easier then for future spares but it's a more involved conversion doing it that way um, well having said that I intend to strip these right down anyway and rebuild them I'd actually be interested if anybody out there has done a disc brake conversion on a series Land Rover I'd be interested in which one it was and how it worked out let's um, move on back a bit then so I've already said I want to replace the existing road springs there with parabolic springs and this is what's going to be on the front. So these are actually new, uh, well I bought these new <laughs> more years ago than I can really remember and you can see the difference, I'll put them up to the originals here. Now we're in a bit of trouble focusing because of the sun but you should be able to see there a very dramatic difference in the there's 11 springs here in this pack and there's two here. The idea is then with parabolic springs they've got much more room to move and so therefore they're going to be inherently more effective. So it's a, it's a sensible replacement I think and uh, obviously I've got them anyway. So this spring is a front spring and it's one of a pair that was living in the back of this Land Rover. <laughs> Somewhere I've got the, the rear pair as well. That's the suspension sorted out. I've got a whole set of um, shock absorbers already. Again, I've had for years, um, brand new ones that have been in storage for years and years. I'm going to upgrade the suspension to the one ton shocks. So it's a basic um, oil filled shock absorber, but heavier grade than what's on there. All right, let's move on up the vehicle. See, we're out of the gearbox. Now, um, I'm not keeping any of this. <laughs> this overdrive unit here on the back, this bit here, is going on the other Land Rover. And I've already got a Series 3 box, a gearbox, a rebuilt gearbox. And I've already, well, years ago, um, rebuilt a transfer box with the high ratio, with the Ashcroft high ratio conversion. So what that'll do is it'll give me um, low range would be unaffected but the high range, the normal gearbox gears will be a bit higher and I think fourth will now be round about where fourth overdrive would be so it's just four gears but they're all higher so yeah so that's a whole unit which is over there somewhere that's ready to go in here Top shafts actually look all right, but we'll see. They'll all be stripped down. So once again, like I say, the entire thing has to be stripped. Every nut and bolt and bracket, everything, it's all got to come off because it's going to be dipped in zinc. Now here's something I've only just noticed. Well, I noticed this one. So this rather loosely fitted outrigger is somewhat higher than it should be. There's a part of the like it's hanging off chassis it should be flush there this outrigger is the wrong one so you see the shape of this outrigger is to hold on the bulkhead and obviously it's matched on the other side there that one is the same as that so this is this is a front outrigger and that explains why it doesn't have these brackets to hold on the rear body um, so yes yeah, obviously that will have to be changed uh, this one well I might as well replace it it doesn't look too clever at the back end now and this is going to be pretty much as it is so I'm going to keep that rear axle I'll take it off clean it up and renovate the brakes but I'm going to keep the drum brakes on the back there because most of the braking effort is done by the front so 
they'll stay at least for now. Um, the fuel tank actually looks all right. It's not the original, so yeah, well, I'll take it off again, clean it up, repair it if necessary. But from initial inspection, that's looking okay. Right at the back here, we've got um, a replacement cross member. Now it looks fairly straight. <laughs> it looks on there okay. I'm going to clean up all around the welds here and have a look at them. Where the welds overlap with the chassis, I may cut them back and just clean them up a bit. Um, as a general rule, patches aren't a great idea because where you have patches on a chassis, so a, a patch of metal over a hole, you're going to have capillary action around that. Maybe not on the outside where you've welded it and sealed it up, but on the inside there's going to be a seam where it can draw in moisture and it will rot from the inside out again. So where I can, I'll cut the patches off and weld it again flush. So that's giving you some idea of what to expect um, coming up then, or my ideas for it. They'll probably change as we go along, but uh, that's the plan as it stands. In the next episode, Dan, I'll be stripping this right down. So I'll be lifting out the gearbox, um, lifting the chassis to get the axles out, just taking everything off. And once it's completely stripped, I'm then going to flip it over and have a look at the underneath, because then that's where the real horrors are going to lie, if there are any to be found. And then I'm going to get busy with this. So this is my needle gun. And if you've seen the other Land Rover S3, or if you've seen the, um, me working on the chassis of the Zill, there was lots of use of this thing. This one's actually broken as it happens, <laughs> but I've got a replacement one I found cheap on eBay. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll last to do this job. So that's all coming up. The progress is being made and I hope to get going with it a bit more briskly now as the uh, I'm getting through my orders and getting back back on there with the projects so yeah looking forward to stripping this down and actually getting some some real progress on it so that's it for now lots done lots and lots to do but making progress yes I'll see you next time cheers